Good evening, everyone. This is Joe Hinches uh, with Beyond the Chart, and this is the market update for Thursday evening for the market day, Friday, September 20th. There are no economic reports tomorrow, so everything is going to be wide open. We'll see how the market continues to react after the big Federal Reserve announcement on Wednesday afternoon. Um, starting off this first uh, chart here with the S&P 500, you can see we've come up like we did um, in the big move on Wednesday. Uh, a little pause today. We were down 3.18. Um, not un totally unexpected. I mean, it's not going to keep going up every day. You're going to, you're going to, like I mentioned yesterday, it's going to, you're going to pull back. You know, one step, two steps. Uh, the trends, you know, it's right now everything looks like it's acting, you know, very well. But we are, we, we have had a pretty good move here. I mean, we've come down, up from uh, late August all the way up to here. So it wouldn't be unusual to see a pullback here. Now, we'll, what I'd look to see is if we could hold the support of the previous high back here, the August 2nd high. So that'll be one of the keys to see uh, how we do. Um, let me take a look at the NASDAQ. Very similar again, it's been the stronger one, um, you know, the, of, of all the indices we've looked at. Now, one indice I haven't looked at, and I just looked at uh, for the first time in a while tonight, is the New York Composite. And the New York Composite shows an interesting formation here. Um, as opposed to the uh, SP 500, which kind of went higher here pull back and has gone higher. The Dow pulled down a lot lower here. This has done what I call an ascending triangle. And it's almost picture perfect. So when I look at this and I see this top with resistance, we've broken through this resistance. We've got this uptrending support line here. Um, I saw this exact same chart on Chesapeake Oil back about a month or a month and a half ago and had a really nice play in it. Um, the market's moving uh, very well in here. Let me let me show you what we're talking about. If I pull this down a little bit, and if I take this trend line and create a parallel trend line, and if I can grab that trend line, there we go, and create that parallel trend line. The way this the, these formations work is this triangle should project along the same trend line out in the future in terms of a move. So the question is, how fast do you get to this move? How fast do you get here? But this is the projection. Now let me just kind of extend. It's not working. There we go. Extend to the right. So, you know, the real question is, do we kind of meander up here? Do we get up here quickly? But here's a target. Here's a potential target for the New York uh, uh, composite. And again, that's a much broader indice than the you know, the Dow 30 or the S&P 500. So that's going to be a really interesting indice to watch here as we uh, go forward. Um, let's talk about a few of the stocks I'm in right now, just as a quick update, and then uh, that'll be it for tonight. Um, 3D Systems, I talked about how I got into that the day before yesterday. I got in right before the close on this big bar, a little nervous about the big bar. Uh, we paused yesterday. And we moved up again nicely today. The volume, I like the fact the volume is above the 50-day moving average. This dotted line is the 50-day average of volume. So you can see when you know volume on a day is kind of subpar or whether it's exceeding the, the average of the last you know 10 weeks. Um, so this is starting to make a nice move, and we'll, you know, I'm expecting this to continue on up. Um, I have October 50 calls, so I'm in the money here uh, significantly. Um, but again, I've only got a little over four weeks left on the timing, so I, I need it to continue moving. Uh, Silver Wheaton, we got in on the close again, the big bar. Uh, up here, we had a little bit of a, it opened up, pulled back, a little bit of a pause today. Um, I'm still very optimistic about Silver here. Now, this could simply be a, that we, it could roll over. You know, I fully expect it to move higher. But this could be an ABC corrective move. I mean, that's totally possible. 
because we are in a downtrend. I mean, we are lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. But I started seeing divergence down here uh, where the indicators weren't going to new lows while the prices did. So that kind of indicated, you know, strength, things were turning. Um, if this is the start of a new move, like I mentioned last night, I'm expecting, you know, five waves, which would be another wave up. But it's got to get above this 60-day, and it needs to get above this point here. What's interesting in here is if you look at where resistance could come in, resistance could come in at 32, okay? Uh, if Well, given that we get through this peak right here, which is the high of 29.17, then we're going to get some more resistance at 32. When I do a Fibonacci projection based on the waves, and I don't have the time to go into this tonight, but we simply look at the length of uh, the first two waves, and then the correction wave four, so wave one, two, three, and four, uh, because these were about equal and, ne and neither one extended, then that means that the, third, the, the fifth wave has the possibility of extending. And so therefore, the initial target is right up here at 100%. Well, it's interesting. That's above this resistance level. It's up into this resistance that you see up in here where we had previous trading. So that's actually my you know, initial target on this thing if we exceed this top right here. So this is the critical, you know, let me, let me go ahead and circle that because, I mean, that is the critical point. We've got to get past that. Okay. Um, that's Silver Wheaton, Cleveland Cliffs. Cleveland Cliffs, disappointing today. It, popped, it opened up, thought we were going to run, went to a higher high than yesterday. Um, again, I got in this right near the close, um, and we pulled down, sold off. So you can see it's, it was pretty much a selling day all day today. Now, it didn't close below the 10-day moving average, so still very you know optimistic this thing is going to round up. But what is it running into here? Let me get rid of this. It's running into this trend line. I've got a major trend line. We've got a minor trend line here. And we've got a 200-day moving average right here. Okay? So those things are creating some significant resistance. That's why this sold off. We've got supply coming in. We get through this point. We get above this point here. And I think we're going to be off, and off to the races and running. And we got this big gap up here where there was a gap in prices where it's just open territory. So, um, again, you know, we're just, I'm holding this, got Novembers, like on Silver Wheaton, I've got Novembers, so I've got time. I'm slightly in the money here, uh, slightly in the money on the, on the Silver Wheaton, so we'll just have to wait and see uh, how this thing acts. But uh, let's see, I think that is about it for tonight. I'll leave you with the New York composite picture. Um, and we'll just uh, probably talk to you Sunday night. And uh, I'm going to look to try to create a, a blog, more of a written blog that I put on the, uh, on the website uh, this weekend. So anyway, uh, have a great Friday. And uh, we'll talk to you this weekend.